So I think year on year, we've uh, had some incredible growth, but you can see from the past couple of years, our profit profile has been uh, improving steadily. So just for example, in um, 2019, we in the second half of the year achieved a half to break even for EBITDA if you're just out the mobile um, handset business that we exited out of. So I think with a, with a break even in the second half of uh, 2019, you're also going to be able to see us continue to improve our numbers in respect of 2020 and the years be, uh, beyond. So it's a real balance, I think, for us um, catching up with the growth that we've got. I think uh, we've got um, strict discipline in terms of cost and now we've got zero debt. Uh, $500 million in cash, I think, for us to take on uh, even more opportunity. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, to doing your bit uh, at a time like this, Min, uh, it is encouraging to see that you're making surgical masks to help combat uh, COVID-19. One million masks is what you've offered. Could you tell us more about how much money is being uh, diverted in helping the situation with manufacturing so of these masks? Sure. So ourselves at Razor, I think we've been um, uh, we've got our own factory facilities. We've been developing. Uh, we've been manufacturing our own products. Um, we've been trying to catch up with the whole consumer demand. We've seen seen this upswing during this uh, period of time. However, we do know that it is part of um, uh, for ourselves for the team to be able to give back to the community with this whole COVID nineteen situation. So we've converted some of our manufacturing facilities to focus on surgical masks so that we can give them away. So. At this point of time, you know, um, the team has been working, uh, you know, additional hours this is over and above uh, the work that we do on a day to day basis. Um, but we don't necessarily see any major impact, I think, in respect of the rest of our manufacturing. Um, essentially, we have expanded manufacturing to really to take on um, the masks as well as um, our current ongoing demand. Right. Uh, and finally, Min, uh, a broad overview, if you you know, touting yourself to be a home economy stock. And that's your business because in a, in a, at a time like this, you know, people would resort to gaming activities, staying at home. Uh, and we've seen that with peers in Nintendo as well as Tencent in the region. Give me uh, an outlook on how you see volumes picking up uh, during these uncertain times. Well, we can literally see it. So ourselves at Razer, we've got this whole ecosystem of hardware, software, and services. So our software platform today has about 80 million gamers. It grew about 40 over percent year on year last year. So our software platform allows us to see the daily user activity. We've seen the significant uptick. I think we started seeing it in China at first, but now we have seen it uh, happening throughout the entire world um, of uh, gamers coming online. They're spending a lot more time in terms of gaming at this point of time. So, you know, gaming or gamers, we um, were built to stay at home, right? To spend time playing games, etc. So we are seeing also a lot of e-commerce activity for our product at this uh, juncture. We've got our services that we help game companies monetize their games. So we can we have also seen an uptick in terms of uh, gamers spending dollars online. So essentially, you know, this entire platform uh, is one of those that we've seen uh, a huge uptick in this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.